interest in our team. And we had great interest when we played the Rams out there this year. Uh, so he, he's, uh, uh, Mikey becomes uh, uh, just like uh, he was next door to this stadium as far as I'm concerned. And uh, uh, we've, we've got certainly a, a great situation here with him and Aaron uh, fighting as far as uh, Dallas Cowboy fans. You mentioned 30 years, a very special anniversary is coming up for you very soon. Well, the question was owning the team for 30 years, what comes through my mind. Uh, I really can say this genuinely. Uh, I haven't worked a day in 30 years. It's been that kind of uh, experience. Uh, uh, it every day uh, has been a, uh, a growing experience. Uh, I have, uh, uh, I've, uh, uh, the NFL and the Dallas Cowboys uh, made me something I wouldn't have been uh, just internally. Uh, it's like a walk-on. Uh, uh, before I knew it, we would uh, do some things, it would work, and I would say, man, that works, I think we'll try this, and then try that. And so. Uh, my, my lesson here, if there is one, if you can get in something that just piques your imagination every day, then uh, you will grow with it. Uh, and consequently, uh, uh, I am not the same person that I was 30 years ago as far as just uh, enthusiasm ideas. And uh, I'm more enthusiastic sitting here today than I was 30 years ago. Is that a big reason why you've been able to turn the massive profit that you have when you bought it? With well, I've always looked at the uh, business aspect of the NFL and the Cowboys uh, as a way to uh, move the ball, uh, uh, make first downs. Uh, uh, I've thanked all of the people that have uh, contributed from our ticket holders to sweet holders to sponsors. Every time Michael Irvin caught a pass, I would tell them that you're impo as important as Michael catching the pass. That's how we, that's how we put this show on. And so uh, I just look for ways. I think it's easy to say for me, if you look at this stadium, you look at the star, uh, I just uh, take the money and put it all back in something more for the Cowboys. Well, I, I'm not going to get into any of our uh, strategies or uh, how we're going to be doing, and it is uh, strategic. Uh, but uh, uh, DeMarcus is uh, certainly a, a, a significant part of now and the future, uh, but uh, uh, we are in the stages of planning on all of our personnel. We've got uh, many of our players that uh, uh, we want to address their contracts in the future. Uh, but the obvious ones are the obvious ones. Uh, and we've got some work to do on others. Uh, but all of that, we're still in the uh, 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 fermenting stage, so to speak, uh, of uh, how we're going to approach the overall picture. Jerry, what do you like about, what do you like about Mikey? Again, I'm not going to get into, Clarence, uh, any specifics with any player. Uh, is just to say the obvious is the obvious, and we've got a holistic thing that we are looking at relative to uh, an holistic being this year, next year, and if you will, even into the third year today. And in our case, we really do need to make this uh, 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 over a two or three year season. When we're looking, I'm talking about not just DeMarcus, but looking at our total uh, player uh, roster. Jerry, what do you like about Mikey? What do you like about Spence? Oh, they're just so talented. Uh, and I was thinking about Mikey, uh, for a former policeman, uh, just his, uh, uh, both of them are intellectually as sharp as anybody you'll ever talk to. They know exactly what they're doing. And then to combine that with that great skill and then the courage and the tenacity that it takes to be a world champion fighter, I can't, I admire them so much. Uh, I'm lifted the fact that they're such cowboy fans. I said the other day, not jokingly, uh, we want that rubbing off on our cowboys. And uh, uh, but uh, I admire their work ethic. Uh, boy, they've got their eye on the ball. Uh, they're young. 
uh, and uh, uh, they were right when they were pointing out to make a fight like this at the stages of their career is rare. And we want to take advantage of it here. And we've got a great boxing interest in this area. And I want to do everything with the Cowboys. I want every way I can with our Cowboy fans or with the Dallas Cowboys to promote uh, boxing. Uh, I admire the people who are involved in the sport. Uh, I know what it calls upon an individual to get out there and fight at that level. And all of that is what, uh, uh, or parts of that, is what I want to have in the Dallas Cowboys. Why did you feel the need to personally get involved in negotiations when this was taking place? Well, I, I think that you've assumed maybe I'm uh, more involved in negotiations than I am. Uh, I think uh, you heard the, these fighters do a lot of, uh, of deciding whether they're going or not. But uh, I think from the standpoint of uh, uh, the economics, uh, what is involved in that area, that's always a, a multifaceted approach. Uh, are multifaceted, the economics, it involves the uh, television aspect of it, that's Fox, those are wonderful associates of mine and ours, uh, the Fox Sports Network, uh, uh, the, the promoters, I, I know uh, uh, all of the prominent promoters, I've spent time with them, I've actually traveled with them for the most part. So uh, from that standpoint, I'm involved, and uh, uh, but uh, 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 some of the nuances of each individual fighter's uh, uh, business, uh, I wouldn't be involved in. Mr. Mr. Jones, you hosted two Pacquiao fights. Oh my goodness, I think uh, uh, he exudes uh, a uh, class. And uh, I think uh, that uh, any sport, when you see somebody that has his style, his class, and then uh, and his intellect, really, and then it uh, 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 manifests itself in, uh, in this sport with uh, uh, the kind of courage, if you will, and uh, the other side of us <laughs> in uh, uh, that aspect makes him unique. Uh, I think both these fighters are unique when, it, when you look at their away from the ring uh, life. Uh, what I do know is that the fact that uh, uh, they're here and the fact that I'm here uh, says that this is a pretty important fight. Jerry, you DeMarcus hosted two Pacquiao fights. Uh, DeMarcus posted a tweet that uh, perhaps a little bit cryptic saying they're lying. Whether that was related to the Cowboys or not is clear, but has there been any sort of discontent between the Marcus and the organization? None. Just none. None, and I'm not aware of that tweet, but it's just absolutely none. As far as I'm concerned, it's one of the best relationships I've uh, have or ha ever had with a player. So you're confident. Again, again, I don't want to get into the negotiation, but uh, uh, the um, relationship's outstanding. Jerry, you hosted two Pacquiao fights. Again, again, I'm not going to get into anything about any of the players relative to where we are uh, with their status or where we are with negotiation. I'm just not going to do So I'm not answering the question in de deference to uh, Lawrence. I'm just saying in general, I'm not going to comment on that right now. We, but we've, uh, we've got a lot of work going on. Jerry, you hosted two Pacquiao fights here to great success, 50,000 plus in each fight. It's no secret that Spence would love to fight Pacquiao as a, as a potentially next opponent. How excited would you be to have that fight here? Well, I don't want to uh, uh, get by this fight, seriously. Uh, uh, I'm so impressed with Garcia. And uh, uh, I think both these guys have the fight of their life uh, coming up here. And uh, you could very well have the best two fighters in the world uh, fighting out here. And uh, let's see what happens here. I don't know that anybody has even got a I know you try to bring inkling of who's the best of these two. Canelo Triple G was a fight you tried to get before. They're also talking about fighting again. Would you still try to make a run for that fight? I sure would. Yes. Any, any, would it, uh, but again, I don't know because it takes a lot of people are involved here. But I did try to get that fight and would try to get that fight. Have you ever tried your hand at boxing? You're pretty athletic in your younger years. I did when I was in high school. What could yeah. be one of those? Was your I did. I did. We had, I was at a boys club. I spent so much time at my boys club 
and it was uh, uh, the, actually uh, Sonny Ingram had the uh, greatest uh, fight base out of that boys club, uh, arguably in the South. And uh, we had uh, uh, some of the great fighters. Uh, 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 Smith, what was the guy from Baltimore? Uh, uh, Bubba Smith? Bu not Bubba, but uh, uh, gosh, his boy played at Plano. Uh, uh, he played at Arkansas uh, and he fought Pete Rademacher. And I was a little knothead and I'd be up there in those gyms and I'd boxing gloves were as big as my head. Uh, but but ever, uh, it seemed like there was an inordinate number of people that would fight out of that boys club. and. Um, uh, so uh, uh, we had a fighter that did fight for the championship, and I looked at that as though I were witnessing Joe Lewis when I was up there. But, uh, yeah, I grew up around a boys' club that uh, Sonny Ingram, that was the, uh, and Buddy Holderfield, those guys were really uh, top guys in boxing. Used to be uh, uh, the uh, uh, a couple of the best beer joints in North Little Rock. You'd drive through and you'd sit in a car and uh, they'd set up a boxing ring in the drive through and they'd have a big prize fight right out there in the middle of the parking lot. And people would come from far and wide and sit there and uh, uh, have a big time and watch those prize fights. And every time somebody fell, it sounded like a bomb going off on those old shaky rings out there. Uh, but uh, I, was, I was about 10, 11, 12 years old uh, down there Honky tonkin. How much you bet on those fights? <laughs> <laughs> Betting wasn't allowed there. <laughs> 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 Jerry, why is Kellen more the right the guy? The Razorback and the Hog drive in. Razorback drive in and the Hog drive in. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Spent a lot. Of, my house was about a block away. Why is Kellen more the right guy? Oh, I, uh, first of all, uh, the reason he's getting the opportunity is uh, his ability to uh, uh, communicate. He has a great way of uh, uh, getting his ideas across, of getting people to listen to his ideas. Uh, I've heard that consistently from everybody that spent any time with him. Uh, he communicates in a way that uh, everybody understands, and uh, he's got a bright mind. Jerry, is there one innovation that you're credited with? Uh, I'm proud of uh, uh, Charlotte, uh, other than the Super Bowls, I'd say the Salvation Army and what we do on Thanksgiving Day and what we've done for all those years and the amount of money that is has incrementally uh, created interest for uh, the Salvation Army. Uh, that's been uh, something that has grown and uh, uh, no matter where I go, almost as often as I hear Go Cowboys, I hear uh, Appreciate uh, everything you do for the Salvation Army. Jerry, do you ever ask you to come out with him in, for this fight? What? Earl Spence asked you to come out with him in this fight when he's doing his introduction. Well, would you, would you we, have, we haven't gotten in the detail of that, but uh, um, I, I don't know about uh, making an appearance in the ring at the fight, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, boy, I'm a fan of his. And uh, uh, actually, uh, this, is, uh, this is a tough one here because I sure admire Garcia. And, uh, uh, Garcia's got quite a story, too. Mr. Jones, how do you think you can do different to negotiate to bring Canelo and Golovkin fight here? More money. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently it hadn't been enough. <laughs> hey, what's your reaction to the Kaepernick uh, settlement? I can't, I can't speak to it. There's a, there's a, uh, you can't speak about it as a part of the settlement. How much has this... Well, I think, uh, uh, of course, um, uh, Kellen had uh, uh, great college experience. In that manner, there's some uh, some comparison there, but Kellen's college experience was off the chart. Uh, and uh, the way he won. And um, then I think that uh, uh, he, he um, certainly uh, both did make an impression uh, that they were certainly almost destined for coaching. And then I think both of them enjoy the same respect 
and uh, appreciation for their uh, their talent, their football IQ in that way. Both of them high quality character. Let me add that too. Both of them extremely high quality character. Jerry, no hesitancy going into Jason, what we call a final year of his contract. Well, Clarence, I'm, I'm, uh, I am, uh, Jason is, we're both happy with where we are. And uh, we've uh, done this before. And uh, we have, and I use that word, uh, I mentioned this to you, it's super, uh, we both have real trust in each other. So uh, a little uh, more unique than normal. Well, I think we've, uh, uh, we've got uh, defensively, uh, we've got to uh, play better than we played against the Rams. And uh, 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 then on offense, I think uh, uh, when they uh, stack it up against Zeke, uh, we've got to be able to open it up. That, that sounds simplistic, but that's the nuts and bolts of it. Well, again, I'm, I'm uh, whatever. Uh, there's a lot of me that feels good when that Zeke's carrying them six and seven yards down the field, too. And so uh, I like what we're doing physically with our running game, and I like what we're trying to do with our defense, and I like the people we're trying to do it with. Uh, we've just got to do it better. Uh, that was very disappointing to lose that Rams game. When you built the stadium, how much of a game changer was it, not only for the franchise, but for the owners? Well, this stadium gave us an opportunity to, uh, 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 the stadium was built for television. And uh, I've said this, but I'll remind you that I said it, it is 10 years old. Uh, it's, look around, look around at the event level. There's no intellectual clutter down there. All the squares are with the squares together, all the circles are with the circles, all the triangles are with the triangles. There's no intellectual clutter. The uh, way it is maintained, cleanliness. Our best, you, many uh, of the very best people we're associated with, come to the event level of the stadium. So ironically, rather than the front door, the event level has to be the uh, neatest and the cleanest. It's important because only 7% of NFL fans have ever been inside an NFL stadium, 7%. 93% of them have, are fans of the NFL through television. And so it's important that Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, it's important that Tony Romo, when they're alluding to the stadium, say, folks, you ought to see this place. You've got to come. You've never seen anything like this place. How clean it is, how organized it is, uh, how it's constructed. I spent about 50% more to get those guys to say that to 25 million people, not just the 100,000 that are in the stadium. And that's what it's about. Do you foresee any talks about the safety position during free agency? Yes. But that's about all I'll say, but yes. Hey, guys, I got to take him to the next station.